woman is entitled to not fear for her life when conceiving a child and giving birth to that child. Every day around the world, every 90 seconds, a mother dies giving birth. The World Health Organization defines maternal mortality as the death of a woman while pregnant or within 42 days of termination of pregnancy, irrespective of the duration and the site of pregnancy, from any cause related to or aggravated by the pregnancy or its management, but not from accidental or incidental causes. The most common way to measure maternal mortality is the maternal mortality ratio, or MMR. This is the number of maternal deaths for every 100,000 live births. Sub-Saharan Africa is geographically the area of the continent of Africa that lies south of the Sahara Desert. 56% of global maternal deaths occur in Sub-Saharan Africa, where for every 100,000 live births, 920 mothers die, compared to only 8 deaths in industrialized countries. Everybody knows somebody's there. That this person was pregnant and she's now dead. This woman was pregnant, she's now dead. Oh, I lost my sister, she was pregnant. Not having a mother deprives children of a proper upbringing. Without one as a role model to guide them, in Sub-Saharan Africa, many are forced to get involved in the worst forms of child labor. A woman living in Africa has a 1 in 22 chance of dying in pregnancy or during childbirth. This compares to a 1 in 4800 in North America. Every 90 seconds a woman dies in pregnancy or during childbirth. This adds up to 1400 women dying each day, an estimated 529,000 each year from pregnancy related causes. Determinants of maternal mortality include cultural and religious values, biological and demographic variables, disease, health systems, and national policies and related investments. The main health-related causes of maternal death are hemorrhage, HIV, AIDS, anemia, malaria, malnutrition, obstructed labor, and complications of unsafe abortion. Shockingly, most of these deaths are avoidable since solutions for preventing or treating these health problems are well known. The problem, however, is lack of access to the knowledge and technical tools that are available to women in developed countries. In many sub-Saharan African countries, maternity wards are in unsanitary conditions. For example, nurses are sometimes forced to sanitize medical equipment in buckets of boiling water over a charcoal fire because there is no electricity. Hinda is an example of a woman who died completely needlessly. When she reached us, she was in a very bad state. When she didn't get decent prenatal care, she was anemic, she had elevated blood pressure, and she was developing eclampsia. And all these things came together and killed her. No woman in this day and age should die of eclampsia. But she was poor. She came from Balegubadli, a village on the border between Somaliland and Ethiopia. The roads were not there to evacuate her in good time. 60 kilometers took her four hours. Non-health sector causes of maternal death include lack of education, water and sanitation, infrastructure, communication, agriculture, and internal security. Illustrated by the data of total expenditure from African countries in 2002, it is clear that transportation and communication is a mere 4% of government's total spending. The majority of spending is directed towards fuel and energy, mining, manufacturing and construction, and general administration, as shown by the other category. The lack of focus on other departments is a major contributor to the maternal mortality in Sub-Saharan Africa. The insufficient funding for the education system is not providing the necessary knowledge to the people about safe sex, contraception, and pregnancy. So we go to the hospital and see operation. Money no day. So I'm able, again, I just bleed no more. I just can't bond the picky now. The picky sleep one day, make it two day, it die. If you go to the hospital, you don't get money, they die. If you give half money at the hospital, then they hold and they say, but you full up the money, you they die. If you're not your God, would teach me and see, me like I don't die. Then give me the reward and say, I'll go. You cannot get the money for pay, all the money. 
Me and see the cry, they go and let let money, money no day. And the money now they cause this problem, why would they die in this country? The money. The high number of maternal deaths in some areas of the world reflects the inequality in access to health services and highlights the gap between rich and poor. Poor women in remote areas are the least likely to receive adequate health care. In Africa, women often have to rely on the willingness of others to get obstetric care because of their low social status. To have timely access to services, she needs a community, husband, and family to provide financial support and transportation. Human rights has to come in at some places, as well as the government need to come in also. We ourselves, the women, need to advocate for ourselves that we are suffering. We are dying because of lack of knowledge. We are dying because we are poor. We are dying because there, it looks as if there is no one, there is no one that is hearing our stories. Global healthcare spending has long neglected maternal care, with policymakers and politicians focusing instead on health issues such as AIDS or malaria. We need a lot of financial help. We need a lot of help with building these infrastructures. Hospitals must be built. We must have proper theaters, like I said before. And then we tackle the personnel, having trained, qualified, medical workers in every aspect. We need proper blood banking system. Some hospitals do not have proper water supply. Some hospitals do not have proper electricity or constant electricity supply. I look at it as a gross violation of women's human rights. We lose so many people. The African governments have not focused their resources enough towards maternal health and adequate gynecological services. The health personnel to people ratio is 1 in 23,460. This grossly disproportionate ratio is partially due to personnel who leave after their training in search of jobs who have the means to pay them. However, organizations such as the UNFPA, the World Health Organization, and UNICEF have made major contributions in improving the maternal mortality issue. Thanks to massive support from the reproductive health sponsored by the UN agencies, like UNFPA. They are giving us drugs, they are giving, off, giving us surgical sundries, and they are giving us incentives so that to motivate the staff, and work effectively. They don't have to pay for care. The UN has set a millennium goal of reducing maternal mortality by three-fourths by 2015. Since 1990, there has been a 41% reduction in maternal mortality in Sub-Saharan Africa. This reduction is due to various initiatives and strategies, such as the World Bank's Poverty Reduction Strategy and the World Health Organization's Maternal and Child Health Program, Safe Motherhood Initiative, and Making Pregnancy Safer Program. Strong economic performance is the only way to improve this issue. In order to achieve this, collective stability among all international governments is imperative. For success of maternal health and safe motherhood, it must have the support of the highest level of national authority. This requires allocation of adequate financial and human resources, improving infrastructure and communications, and putting in place effective and implementable standards, policies, and protocols. Internally, this includes providing family planning, prenatal care, and emergency obstetric care. Externally, as a global community, we need to make the prosperity of African women, children, and families a top priority and provide economic support. When mothers are saved, babies are saved. When babies are saved, families are saved. It's saving the pillar of that family. Women.